All right, welcome back everybody. We are going to be painting and painting anime cells today in Clip Studio. So this is probably the most fun part of the anime process because you actually get to see it get finished.
Oh, I need to un unmute Will here. Sorry, okay. Will, you're oh, yeah, unmuted. The speed... Okay, good. The speed by which things progress during the paint process is also a little bit more exciting, too. Yeah. It's going to be a little more interesting to watch, for sure. All right. So I've got... We don't have an alias version of this. We lost the art. This was made a, like a year and a half ago, so we don't know where it is. So we're just going to pick colors out of this. We do have large enough areas where I can tell what the colors are intended to be. So just be usually you would fill the doga using uh to tell which side of the line is which color but in this case you can refer to the keys i guess okay so this is how i do this in clip studio um what is this a1 here I guess nothing. I'm going to delete that. So first thing I do in Clip Studio is I'm just going to duplicate the Dogo layer. You don't want to, you don't want to color directly in the Dogo layer because you don't want to work destructively. I'm going to rename this color. I'm going to turn this on. Hmm. Our go say parent didn't end up in there. I'm gonna add that to up here. Now we can just turn off all these other layers. You don't need anything except for the color color folders. I'm gonna delete the color sample. That was something I made last stream. First thing I'm probably going to want to do here is color the Gose parent. Yeah, that's a good choice. Because, for example, on that line coming off of the pillow, uh, that circled shadow is actually a normal. So on all of the Gose children around it, um, the outside of that actually needs to be shield filled with shadow color. Yeah, so uh, what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to go through and rasterize all of these layers. One thing I do is I'll, I'll have a line layer and then I'll merge the color layers together, which for me, this is just the fastest way I found to work in Clip Studio. This is we're kind of reverse engineering the paint man methods to make uh, or the Paint Man color keying system for Clip Studio. I'm gonna rename this color and then I'm gonna rename the black line. I'm gonna go ahead and do that for all of the cells real quick actually. One thing I'm going to do too while I go is I'm going to actually lock the line layers for now because I don't want to accidentally paint on those because I'm going to I'm going to actually color the lines later probably. So uh, someone was asking about the assassination classroom thing that we were talking about earlier for thick lines. I didn't find that, but there is this, which is an example from uh, Attack on Titan. Actually, you can see all I the can dark just, green filled areas. I can just pull up my uh, 
the example from the Doga training real quick. Yeah. Um, but this example too is also. Yeah, go check that out. Double well. lines for black. You can see how they uh how this might be difficult. It's absolutely ridiculous to in between cuz yeah. You can accidentally in between one side of the line with the other side, for example. <laughs> Yeah, the thicker parts, you do it in double lines in order to color it properly, but also so that you can in between it with proper motion. Because if you have a filled in line, it's very difficult to look at in a light table and in between position A and position B. Where's the wrong layers? Okay, time to start. I think for the blanket, we're gonna be using temporary colors here. Uh, I think I want to use like a uh, like a light pink here. <coughs> Could you use a separate color for the uh, underside of the blanket, the one part that's flipped over? So you yeah, do like a little like bit a more lighter tone variation. Yeah. And then just blanket it sheets and pillow if all three of those are different colors. We can figure out something nice with the backgrounds later on. So, let's see. Go say is what we're focused on first. 
I'm gonna turn this off so I know where the Gose is. I'm gonna have to connect on each frame. I'm gonna have to connect it to like pixel perfect to the Gose parent. But for now, I'm I'm just going to uh, create these kind of fill lines so that I can actually paint this. By the way, these fill lines where you close things off are usually done during the Doga process. But since we're doing them all together in Clip Studio Paint with the same staff, we're going to be doing them now, just right as we paint them. I'm going to recolor these lines uh, in a second, but I'm just putting them here so that we have them. Okay. Uh, let's see, how many years have you been artists? I've been technically drawing since I was like 17. I've and been, I've been in the animation industry since 2012. I've been drawing since I was like 12 years old. Like in primary school. Actually 10 years old, technically, but uh... Um... I guess that would make it like 15 years, but I, d I do not have the skill level of someone that has been drawing for that long, in my opinion. I guess it just depends on what you're practicing and how. Yeah. Okay, let's grab uh, Who designed the character? Uh, that was me. Uh, the me talking is Will right now. I've never actually done character design before, so it was kind of fun. So I think down here is more of the blanket. Because it can't be the mattress because it doesn't line up. Uh, I think there's blanket and then mattress underneath that. I'm not positive though. It might all be blanket. I think it's all blanket. And then for the sheet, maybe do like a... Maybe a lilac. Yeah, that sounds good. So normally these color choices would be already done by the uh, color artist. And they would be decided by having a meeting with the background director in which the background director would decide which types of colors were going to be used in the backgrounds. And then they would decide the, that with the cell color artist. And in this case, we're deciding things as we go along. I think I might do a green line on the uh, carrot back here yeah the color outlines you could do like all just a lighter color or maybe just like lighter versions of the you colors. think lighter instead of darker um well the room is kind of backlit from the window so bright lines might be kind of cool we can adjust that in color keying in the final if you want but it can be kind of interesting for backlit scenes. I might change these colors later, but for now I'm just... It's really easy to go in at the end and 
change the colors if you don't like which ones because you can just target the entirety of that same color. Okay. Hmm. So I've got my Gose parent colored. They may not perfectly attach here, but it's okay because I'm going to... If I, if I target all layers here, I'm going to be able to color in the gaps here. So... I'll address that line gap down there in a second. Uh, P was asking, did you guys even sleep this day? There were like three continuous streams. Yeah, I was actually supposed to stream again last night, but I took a nap and it ended up sleeping <laughs> until morning. So apologies for that. But yes, we have been sleeping. Yeah, I slept uh, probably 10 hours. That's good. I always end up not sleeping, but as far as what I would suggest to people is always get maybe eight hours at least. Yeah. Because you're actually smarter and work better yeah. if you have fully if you're fully rested. And you can also there's a risk of your brain chemicals getting out of whack as well if you don't sleep. Have I tried Flash? How does it compare to Clip? I despise Adobe Flash, personally. I don't think it's very useful to animate in full vectors. It seems like a waste to be able to infinitely zoom in. You also have to deal with vectors completely attaching perfectly and stuff like that. I have tried it, but I never really got used to it. You can use it for like layout or cleanup even, but I just never got used to how the brushes perform. And also they've recently added the ability to rotate the canvas. And also Ryochimo had made a plugin where you could rotate the canvas, but I never really got into using those separate plugins or the most updated version. So it was always really difficult to draw in for me. The resolution standard for anime is usually somewhere around 150 dpi. And that's with a 10 inch horizontal frame. There are some other shows like Violet Evergarden was 200 dpi, I'm pretty sure. And they use Vista style or Vista size paper, which is a little bit larger. So that's probably a little bit over 1080p native resolution. But a lot of anime is closer to native 720p, or sometimes even less. The most tedious part of this is probably going to be like doing what I'm doing right now, and that's making sure the Gose child fits the parent perfectly. Oh yeah, one thing that you could do is uh, paint all of the children first, so that you didn't have to clip every bit. See in here, I actually have to get in and edit the lines. Yeah, this part you probably have to.
Yeah, I didn't check the connections with the Gosei parent, but usually that's also something that the Gosei or that the Dolga can does with. as well. Yeah. I'm just going to race it back a little bit. So that I can... I'm basically just going to redo Doko on this. With a lot of Doga being done on paper, there's kind of a margin of error for... There's tiny little bits of distortion that a scanner will introduce into the drawing. Like, say, you have parts of the paper that is pushed up directly against the glass versus some of the pieces of paper, or some of the parts of the paper are floating by, like, a millimeter. And so that'll introduce tiny amounts of distortion, and even if you thought you were extremely precise at connecting these lines together on paper, um, it'll actually be off on the scan. And so the paint artist often has to do very tedious work in adjusting these so that they fit together. The reason why anime shows are made in 720p is so that they can get the lines right without a bunch of holes in them. Because if you scan paper dolga at too high of a resolution, it picks up a bunch of noise within the line, and cleaning that noise makes uh, for a ridiculous amount of work, and also you just get a lot more inconsistencies with the line. So they're doing it in order to get good lines fast, but also as sort of a hard cap on the amount of detail that you can draw in. Okay, now that my ghost is child is connected to the parent, I'm going to switch to only coloring the layers in the folder that I'm working in. That way I can actually color on top of the uh, on top of the parent. Right, yeah, it makes sense. Moose Man asks, how do people animate super good looking clouds and skyboxes like in Attack on Titan? I think for Attack on Titan, it's more the background art that's really, really good. And I think that's just their, their color choices being excellent and also the painting skill. Stan, yeah, the cells are native 720 or sub 720p, but they anti-alias and export at 1080p after using a bunch of filters and stuff. And there are still a lot of shows that are sub 1080p, even on the export, but there's lots, there's starting to be more shows that are native 1080p. Like the new uh, Sword Art Online, for example, was native 1080. Yeah, exactly. They do the scaling up and anti aliasing at 1080. And they also use filters, for example, a. Uh, what is it, a pinching mask filter or something over the black part of the lines so that it makes them um, thinner. And because that is applied at 1080p on top of anti-aliasing, it really sort of cancels out any pixelization that you had. If you were doing an entirely digital animation, would it be better to work at 1080p to start since the paper thing wouldn't happen? Yes, I agree with this. That's also why we are working at 1080p right now. So hopefully everything will turn out nice and clean.
Oh, this is actually the, uh, the underside of the blanket, so I've got to recolor it. Do you have any tips on fast drawing or getting good fast? Um, I would say don't draw without reference. Like any time that you want to spend drawing, like if you don't have a lot of time to do it, uh, spend that time while looking at some of your favorite drawings as inspiration and also just as direct reference. And then also draw from life regularly. Thoughts on all the awards that Demon Slayer won a while ago? Um, I don't know, it's very well made and the, the source material is also pretty interesting so I can kind of understand it. I was. I'm still not like totally into it yet. Uh, I'm gonna be rewatching it again. Pretty soon though. I wasn't a fan of the story, but the animation was incredible. Yeah. And the movie that came out recently too is just like selling insanely. It's breaking all kinds of records. So that's kind of exciting to see animation uh, break new records again for Japan. He's then saying, I've seen a lot of 1080p digitally animated stuff where the lines just look too clean and high res compared to more analog looking anime lines. I wonder if making it at 720 and upscaling could work. Uh, yeah, it does introduce a sort of artificial noise. That's why um, like Megalobox is a show that really tried to do a VHS style filter. So they downscaled it to like 480 or 540p or something and then re output it at a higher resolution to get like a sort of artificial blur so if you guys aren't familiar with this tool that i'm using the paint unfilled area tool it is magical you just highlight the uh, area you want to color, and it'll color every single pixel that's not already taken. Or it'll, it'll average out all the pixels that you're currently on. And fill it in. It'll just take a guess at what it thinks you want to color. One thing I like to do is I like to flip through the cells and then do these kind of batch colorings of these zones. You don't want to color the entire cell one frame at a time. I think it's better to to do it one piece at a time. Uh, Galaxy Eyes is asking, how long do any of your Beyblade episodes make? Uh, I probably shouldn't answer specifically about Beyblade, just because of uh, disclosure reasons, but generally episodes for anime take uh just on any average production they take between one and two months from the storyboards being complete to airing time or not airing time but um sending in the completed video file to air Markov's saying, in order to imitate the old look, you need almost more resolution. For example, small line breaks and stuff. Uh, yeah, I agree with that about um, for the line fidelity and also for just general noise. 
one thing I was experimenting with is if you look at the new Full Metal Panic that has 3D mechs and you put a noise filter on top of them, because the shading is pretty good, they'll actually look very cell-like with the right noise filter on top. But the issue is that um, with online video, the compression just destroys any of the noise filter that you add to it. So it's very difficult finding a balance. And a lot of the old look comes with a better color choice. Yeah, or just the different color choice for, for what was popular at the time. Uh, let's see. Yes, we have seen the Jujutsu Kaisen opening. Uh, it's insane. <laughs> Favorite opening of the year, maybe. I actually uh, haven't seen it yet. Oh, okay. You should. Yeah. It's excellent. Uh, yeah, we'll be doing composite in After Effects. And to draw consistent in-betweens, using the light table and shift and trace is mandatory. Pretty soon the lines here, are between two and three pixels. Uh, what were you saying? Pretty soon here, I'm gonna have to refer to the Genga and look at the uh, shadow markup guide because some of these areas I don't know if it's hair or pillow. So right, exactly. That's why the fill process is kind of important for in betweens. In this case, you don't have areas moving into other areas, but if, for example there was larger movement and that hair shifted from one side to another if you weren't thinking about the color as you were drawing it then uh you could easily in between the wrong line with like the opposite side and in between a pillow line with a hair line for example Habarudo's asking in your analog experience is doing nudiwake uranudi that's the shading of the shadow areas of specific parts across all frames at once before moving on to the next part faster than doing all colors on one frame for me it is best to do the uranudi on the keys first and then the middle in between of that and then the moment you actually comprehend and sort of have it in your head or your memory as to which parts are shadow and which parts aren't, then you can kind of go through and do the lines without any filling. And then at the very end, I'll go through and do complete fills of each frame. So uh, stack one frame on top of the previous and then fill in all of the shadow areas and then move on to the next frame. And then you'll do a flip check of all of the filling on the back as well by flipping the paper over and then just flipping everything together so that you didn't forget any fill area. Found How do you an, know what to... S oh, go ahead. Found an error here. This piece of hair. Uh -oh. Was it disappearing in and out of existence? Um... I believe it's my job to fix this. Because I see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh, Jose's asking one month for a full episode? Yes, one full episode, not an entire season. Uh, how do you know what to separate when using limited animation? Uh, you just have to think about the way the body moves, and also if you can get the motion range within less than one line width, where the seams of whatever you're separating into copy-paste and not to, then it's okay to separate things. Okay, see now uh, I can turn on the 
the Negan and I can see clearly that the color underneath is the it looks like it's the bed actually let me turn off my color layer it actually could be the bed or the pillow so I'm gonna assume since it's underneath her head it's gonna be the pillow I think you have a mix of pillow and hair under there. Uh, Ethan asks, is in betweening always the sort of line distance from yesterday, or are there ones that are much farther apart and things are less obvious? Uh, there's a lot of both. And so the like if you get an in-between where you have to do a rough in order to make it, it's a lot of extra time. But there's lots of very precise in between in anime. Asodan asks, when you finish the animation, are you going to make a video summarizing the whole process? Yes. That's actually why we're making this. Yep. Okay. I think I want to make the polka dots blue. Blue seems like a good color. Now that I'm seeing this, it doesn't look so good. I will go with purple, I think. Or maybe just a darker pink. Yeah, that's a good idea. Nope. Definitely going more red here. white would work too. Yeah, I'll try white here in a sec. If I uncheck apply to connected pixels only, I can just affect the same, this specific color. I think we need to do a warm white because the pillow is warm. Michael's asking, are the camera tools for CSP a plugin or a native feature? They're a native feature, actually, yeah. So it's very useful for uh, making fancy pans and stuff within the software. 
Or if you have something like a multiplane follow. So that's where you have a character walking down the street and maybe things at different distance are scrolling past. So they scroll at different speeds. You can test those scroll speeds, which is very nice. If you're working analog, you have to either measure things out with math or um, sort of fly blind with your um, sliding speeds, the sliding speeds that you use. Shinko guy, do you need a degree for a working visa in Japan? Um, you don't need one, but it's a lot easier and better to have one, I think. Like if you're already working on a degree, I would definitely finish it. Twin C animation, yes, we're both from the US. Javi Shek says, I'm really bad at picking colors. I need to learn it soon. Uh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I just do trial and error. If it, let's keep trying stuff until it looks decent. Yeah. There's, like, there's I've been... color design theory, which I, haven't, I know nothing about. Yeah, like, I've been sort of hammered in the techniques that you need for like professional anime quality in the lines but the color in background and composite stuff i really have to pull through like stretching myself to like stuff that i haven't done before in order to get it right Uh, Michael Gomez asks, what are some habits that you do to not harm yourself from sitting down too long? Uh, Thanks for me... reminding me to stretch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for me, I like to do pull-ups. And that's because sort of having your body dangling sort of helps with your spine. And pull-ups use a lot of your supporting muscles your back. in your torso. Yeah, you gotta have the strong, and strong back. back muscles, and your if your back's stronger, it'll help your posture and support your spine and all that. I do pull-ups too. Yeah. Yeah. And the other one I would say is to try to not angle your neck down too much. So right now I'm trying to color all of the brown on her hair, which is the shadow zones. 
on one frame just so I know where everything is and then I can turn off the Kinga layer. Uh, yeah, and you have chunks of that that are empty parts and chunks of that that are hairs on that back area, so it's kind of confusing. Yeah. And that's why these little X's are helpful. Oh yeah, Helltown was asking any tips on learning anatomy. I was relooking over, uh, I think it was George Bridgman. His books are quite nice. I'm probably going to do another run through of anatomy books. Because I'm looking to improve myself a lot more as well. It's been a while for me. So I like Michael Hampton already, and I'm going to go through George Bridgman a little bit more. A lot of Japanese animators like Loomis, though. So I think as long as you're choosing a resource and sticking with it and working. It's good. Most public libraries actually surprisingly will have Andrew, uh, Andrew Loomis. And if, if they don't, uh, public libraries have, uh, you can ask them about their, uh, at least if, they, if you're in the US, they usually have access to a larger system of libraries and you can request books. You can also find PDFs online, but Libraries, are, libraries like, are cool. Yeah, I found for study resources, it's kind of nice to have a physical book because yeah. you can just have it on your desk and then not worry about screen space while looking at it. I do that with the Yoshinari sketchbooks sometimes because I'm drawing a cut with a lot of motion frames, like figure motion. I'll have like his figures out on the desk next to me <laughs> as a reference. Just remember to stay loose, remember to focus on gesture kind of thing. So I don't get too overwhelmed, I'm basically just picking a specific sections of hair and making sure they're all colored, and then I'm going to move on to a different section. I'm not using the paint bucket tool because uh, the paint bucket tool will miss pixels, and we don't want holes in the cell. I'm just saying, I'm worried when I... Uh should be ready for work in the Japanese industry. And I'm scared, but at the same time would like to start. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of people can relate to that feeling of not knowing if you're ready or not. Um, I guess maybe applying to the Striving Discord or um, maybe messaging me to get some feedback, I can let you know. You can just message me on Twitter if you want. One thing I do kind of want to avoid is like too extensive stuff like back and forth in DMs. If possible, like feedback that I give to one person is probably helpful for a lot of people. So uh, it'd be nice if we could talk publicly too. If you prefer DMs, I guess that's over hit okay as well though. That's one of the benefits of the striving discord is the if people are providing feedback, everyone that's in the Discord gets to benefit from that discussion. 
That's actually the main reason we made this channel too, is so that, for example, Will wouldn't have to explain the same thing over and over again to a million people. We could just say, hey, there's a video about it. Right, yeah, exactly. The fill tool is a fill empty area tool. Are you using the custom one or? Like no, this default? is default. Yeah, paint unfilled area okay. is what it's called. If you go into the paint bucket and scroll down the sub tools, um, I hotkeyed my tools so that I can switch between the paint bucket and the paint unfilled area, which I highly recommend doing. No, Shafa is asking what color do you use for the color separation line? Uh, blue, red, and green. Jirudu is asking, do you guys have any tips for animating lip sync? Uh, lip sync in anime is done with three frames. They're all on threes, so that's eight frames per second. And 99% of the time it's done with, you start with a closed mouth, and then when the dialogue starts, you go directly to an open mouth, and then you go back and forth between one, two, and three at random for the duration of the line. And then, I guess as a general tip, you have more... 2-3-2-3, two, three, two, three, and that 2-3 is the middle mouth, and 3 is the open mouth, Then, and then you get 1, you'll put in the closed mouth on 1, or as the 1, like once every 1 to 1 and a half seconds. And then generally it'll look like anime mouth flaps. That's kind of different from what they do in like Legend of Korra or something, when they'll have more mouths, but also some of the mouths will be on twos and stuff to time it more directly with the actual dialogue. But I think the sort of limited mouth flap way of dealing with things sort of helps you avoid a kind of uncanny valley with the way that the mouth is moving in relationship to everything else on screen. Quincy's asking, what's that green line thing you did? Is that the... This is, it's the you... paint unfilled area tool. So you, in order to use it, you want to highlight the region that you want colored fully, like you encompass it completely, and then it'll fill it in. If you have gaps in the green, like, like this, it won't work. Linda Coleman's asking, is an iMac computer good for animating? Uh, yeah, it's fine. Anything that has maybe 16 gigabytes of memory or more, and maybe an i5-ish or an equivalent is more than sufficient. More memory might be a little bit better, so 32 if you can afford it is nice, but for a long time I animated on a used... ThinkPad from like 2012 that I upgraded to have 8 gigs of memory 
but I bought it for like $170. And that worked perfectly fine for me. You just have to close extra stuff while you're animating. And just stick to like anime music and maybe one video. So yeah, an IMAX good for animation, but you could go cheaper too. I would say you can get a better you can get a better desktop or Windows PC for the same price. Yeah. Well, that's the old debate. Yeah. But if you're not like a computer geek or a computer whiz, it might be better to go Mac. Uh, Ethan's asking about the aliased lines, if there's a filter we recommend. There's two that a lot of people use. One of them is by OLM, and that's OLM's anti-aliasing or smoothing filter. It's on their research and development site, on their official site. And the other is PSOFT's anti-aliasing. Both of them are used for actual anime, so very solid anti-aliasing filters. Jericho, yes, think bad for the win. Like, it's one of those older ones without, like, the... Uh, like, where they cut the voltage down on the CPU to save battery and heat. It's, like, full voltage, but still pretty cheap. So it runs, like, way faster than it should. <laughs> The red line outside her hair is a highlight color, so it's like a stray strand of hair. I can go ahead and color that now so you guys can see. Gogarts, yes. Clip Studio is still missing an option for still fill separation lines using the fill tool. It would be awesome, like what we have in Paint Manor Open Tunes. Yeah, that's the biggest thing for me that I wish they would add. And like, it seems like you could make one yourself for like custom settings or something, but nobody's been able to do it. And I'm like kind of grug brained when it comes to making stuff like custom for software. So I haven't done it myself either, but it would be really nice to have. I find that the uh, paint unfilled area tool works pretty well for coloring. Cause like I can color the blue line, the red line and the fill area at the same time with this. Yeah. So it's, I think it works good enough, but yeah, definitely being able to just click it once would be great. But... Oh yeah, you should separate that highlight into two colors. Did you notice how uh, both lines are there? Left over? You should have a shadow highlight. Sorry about that. Here? Yeah. See how the, sha the highlight moves into the shadow? So that would need... Uh... A darker version of the highlight. Yeah, sorry, I should have said that earlier. Fill separation line. Yes, big want. Does the industry use more Windows or Mac? Uh, I see almost only Windows, personally. Just because uh, people can't really afford Macs, for the most part. There's a decent amount of uh, key animators using iPads, though. Because if you compare the cost of an iPad to buying a graphics tablet and a computer to go with it, it's a pretty good deal. As long as you're okay with the size and the software options.
Well, is asking, have you seen guys, or have you guys seen animators using Linux with our primitive tools? Isn't there a Linux version of uh, Krita? That might. I be don't know anybody usable. that uses Linux, for but I'm sure you can. Like the only issue is I don't know if there's any software with an out of pegs function that you can use on Linux. So that would be maybe a little bit limiting. Is that highlight shadow a different color than the normal, at least? If it's exactly the same, it makes it a little bit difficult to... Is it a different color than the normal? You mean yeah. the... The basic hair color? Should it be lighter? Yeah. It should be just a different color, whether lighter or darker. Or just a lighter version of the, the shadow color, maybe? Yeah, because if it's the exact same color, then we can't use a color replace to finalize the colors. Yeah, Crete does the best option, I think, for Linux. It's just, it doesn't have out of pegs yet. I think there was supposed to be a project adding out of pegs uh, features to it, but it hasn't happened yet, as far as I know. Yeah, we want a third, that's what Ethan's asking about, there will be a new color for shadow highlights. Yeah, we want the shadow highlights to be two colors so that both of the highlights are specific colors. And what that allows you to do in post-processing is you can color key out, which is like select only those exact color values and then cut them out onto a different layer and apply like a blur or screen effect, for example, to make the shadow or to make the highlights glow. That's why they need to be like a specific separate color from the other elements. Okay, let's do, let's do the face. Skin. So you have to cut the cheek blush if you haven't already. For the blushes, yes, there's a way to do that, but it's kind of glitchy around areas like where you can't fill in the entire... Like if the cheek blush is cut in half multiple times, then uh, the area where it's cut also gets blurred. So you'll get a non-blush color like along the border of that hair, for example. And so to avoid that, you actually cut the blush into a different layer paste that on top in composition and then you mask out like every color except for the skin so it only appears on top of the skin color. Now remove it from the main cell, right? Uh, yeah. It's just like a separate cell on top of everything.
Uh, is there any difference between iPad and PC CSP? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't really used the iPad version. Sorry. Um, the iPad version has a much... It's like a simpler UI. Uh, I don't think you can do everything that you can do on PC in that version. Gogarts asks, do you know if there are job opportunities for anime colorists? Um, there are within Japan and also in Southeast Asia. But generally in Japan, you would apply to them after graduating from a technical school, I think. But yes, the jobs and options definitely do exist. I'm not sure about... Uh, being able to get that kind of work freelance, though. How long does it normally take to finish one scene? Uh... <laughs> it's hard, hard to calculate to it. Yeah, because it yeah. passes through so many hands. I have the entire layout process for Cut 7 on the channel. And also... Yeah, maybe when we stream the second key for that. You can maybe <laughs> add up all our streams together. Yeah, the time we hit do the total. I'm definitely going to do the total time for cut seven because that my, would be funny to see. My guesstimate would be a hundred hours per cut. Yeah, maybe something like that. If you add in Doga for stuff like cut seven, it's probably even more time. <laughs> But, I don't know. We'll see. That's a normal, not a highlight. By the way. Or a normal, not a darker color on the nose. It's a normal? Yeah. Oh, okay. When you say normal, it makes me like think of CG, and I'm like... Oh, yeah. In the normal <laughs> map. I just realized in Sailor Moon, they have that exact same uh, line on the nose, but it's a shadow. Uh, Gogarts, if you're thinking as a freelancer, maybe um, cell checking or uh, in between checking is something that I do see some freelance people, like while they are Japanese, some freelancers are doing it. Se Seru Kensa. And that's where you like check the sell data for an entire episode for errors and fix them. Oh yeah, normal means non-shadow, a fill color in anime terms.
Hi Panda, welcome. Okay, for the mouth line, is that gonna be the skin or the inside of the mouth? Uh, let's see. That mouth line is going to be the inside of the mouth color. Okay. So we're gonna try that as teeth color for now to see if it looks weird. So in this case, it would be the shadow color of the whites of the eyes. Okay. Luna Schaefer, hello. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Uh, lots of vocational schools seem to run 2.2 to 3 million yen, and most require N2 level of Japanese. Uh, yeah, I think so. Equair is asking why the skin color is different from the reference. Uh, that's because the entire body is in shadow, so it's all the shadow color. Uh, Flying Panda. Ah, yes. Will and Jarrett, my favorite VTubers. I was actually trying out this, like, VTuber app where it, like, takes your image and makes mouth flaps out of your mic. Hmm. Someone in, like, an earlier stream made a joke uh, about how they could learn to draw with their arms crossed and that made me think okay well i'm gonna i'm gonna have to just make like a, a live 2d model of my avatar drawing or something <laughs> arms crossed is good though it's much more powerful yeah Is it worth going to Japan as a freelance animator in general? Because I've heard how the market is saturated and the pay is low. Well, the pay is super low and the cost of living is somewhat high in comparison to that. So in that sense, you're at a disadvantage. I don't think the market's uh, saturated though. Yeah. Uh, it's actually niche people. Yeah, animators are still in very high demand. So in that respect, it's very much appreciated as being there. And the other advantage is if you can get yourself a half contract, the pay is pretty decent. And uh, you can also get the opportunity of going in house and working alongside really skilled people that will give you pointers and stuff in how to become a better animator. So there is that benefit, which is very big. But I'd say if you were to come here and had no intention of getting a half contract or anything like that, then you would have difficulty keeping a visa, like making enough money to keep your visa. Because you need to have at least minimum wage. To keep a work visa. Mm, wrong color. This is Shadow. Caleb, it's more of a flex to be animating with your arms crossed. Gotta assert your do your dominance. Yeah. Yeah, I might T pose later. <laughs> be pretty cool. <laughs> Can you explain half contract? Uh, yeah, it's like a retaining fee in which you get paid extra, like a set fee on top of your per cut or per frame uh, pay. So that usually starts around, I'll just say in US dollars, around $1,000. $1,000 to $1,500. 
and it can go up to four thousand dollars so you get that plus the per cut pay every month and that really helps boost your uh salary into very normal or actually quite respectable figures but it's only usually available to people that are more competent that the studio wants to pay that extra amount to keep them around and available. Uh, Havardo, the studio I'm at is really helpful in terms of having seniors teach us, and I super recommend it if you're planning to come to Japan. Yes, I agree with that too. Like I liked... I had some bad experiences, but also a lot of good ones as well. So, uh... Yeah. If you want to get good, then it's always very nice to be in the same room as people that are really good and, you know, being able to have the option or being forced to talk to or mentor with them. Wow, my English is really weird right now. Sorry. <laughs> Something that's funny about this that we didn't actually think about She's sleeping in the same shirt that she, she puts on the same shirt after she takes a shower. Yes. <laughs> like a true uh, true animator. I think I'm just projecting no, on the way to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no laundry for, for this person. I did that this morning. I went to bed and I woke up, put on the same shirt that I wore the, the day before. I just yeah. do the smell check. We should add a cut of her doing the smell check. <laughs> yeah, smell check. <laughs> smell the armpits. If it doesn't stink, you can put it on. That's good. Yeah, accidentally realistic. <laughs> <laughs> Stinky animator. Uh, the visa stuff is really confusing. Let's see. Ethan saying, I live here, but I don't know how to self-sponsor a visa. Don't you need a company to sponsor you first? Uh, yes, you do. Like, it's not necessarily sponsoring, but a work visa requires you to be not freelance. So, whether you're at a studio and they call you technically freelance, like, that's okay, but you have to provide information that you're at that studio for at least like a 40 hour week full time. And also the studio provides background information on what they are, like if they're legitimate and if they're making money and how they're making money and stuff like that. And so that's not necessarily them sponsoring you as them just providing the necessary documentation that the immigration bureau needs. No, 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 and that doesn't sound like low wages at all. Yeah, if you can get a half contract, things can be pretty decent. The super low and ridiculous wages are for people that don't have them, which is a lot of people, though. Like my first who, six or seven years as an animator, I didn't have a half contract, so uh, it was very tough. Somehow, the cells started coloring the, uh, the lines of the Gose parent. 
Uh oh. I guess what you can do is uh, select click the goal state parent lines and use that as a um, selection area and then just go through every frame and hit delete on the go say children. I think I already got it. Oh, okay. I just did a transparent fill. Oh uh, yeah, that works. Michelle Kim, how long have both of you been in the field? Uh, for me, uh, since 2012. For me, since and Jared this year. Started. Yeah. Are there any options to make the blue and red lines transparent or to paint it manually? I mean, like Toon Boom. Uh, I don't think so, like to paint like Toon Boom vectors, but the. I guess what you're shooting for with these kind of lines is to have the pixels be the actual fill area. So one shorthand you can do for filling it is the unfilled area tool, like what Jarrett's using. And then another good option is maybe um, filling all of the blue of the lines into the actual fill area, and then filling that color again with the uh, shadow, for example. So when I did all of my visa stuff, did you bring all the documents between the studio and the government, or was it more something the studio had to figure out? Uh, I asked the studio for documents specifically. Uh, according to the guidelines on the Immigration Bureau site. So like stuff that like they ask your studio to provide or they ask you to provide uh, proof of the annual income of the studio, the address, your uh, your contract status and stuff like that. And so I asked them for that and they provided it. But I'm not an immigration lawyer, so <laughs> maybe you shouldn't ask, or you shouldn't uh, go by my advice so specifically. Because I might be wrong about something. Uh... Caleb's asking, how are you doing the audio? We're using free sound effects and music. And there's no voices, so we don't have to become a cute girl. Yeah. <laughs> Sigh. Chile is asking, have I made any Sakuga animations? Uh, maybe. I've tried. Uh, there's some, you can search my name on Sakuga Border and some stuff comes up. A lot of it is very embarrassing, <laughs> but yeah, I try and I will continue trying. I don't think I will ever do Sakuga animation because I like to animate stuff that doesn't move.
Uh, I guess like I'll post a link. This is maybe one of my more decent looking cuts that I've done recently. And in a strange coincidence, the person that did Doga for this is actually somebody that I know from Striving. And she's actually worked on Second Key and is helping us with Doga for this short as well. I'm not sure if she wants us to say her name though, so. Uh, Madru Gaiden, you posted a link. I guess YouTube's like blocking it. Stupid YouTube. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and change the line color on this just so it looks like there's glass sitting on top. Yogurt has saying, I'd like to focus on Doga. Do you guys have any tips or exercises for that? I would say practice um, key trace, accurate key trace at first. And so you can download keyframes from the internet and then use a two pixel brush. You can resize them to be like the same canvas size that we're using. Get a two or three pixel brush and then go through and practice tracing accurately. And the way that you check whether your trace is accurate or not is you flip back and forth between the key and the trace that you're doing. So you would register the key to the light table and then you press Alt, one, two, one, two, one, two to flip back and forth. And you check for like moving parts because if it looks like it's moving or jumping back and forth, you know that your line is off. Then after that, you would go through and start doing tapwadi, which is shift and trace in between and doing the same flip checking to make sure that you're accurate. And practicing that accuracy and honing it is kind of the key to getting yourself up to like solid doga level. Fairly decent, thank you. Nice animation on Tiger Mask, thank you. That was like one of my favorite projects to work on. Yeah, I definitely want to do more good animation moving forward. Whoops. <laughs> I accidentally what covered happened? all the outlines. Oh. It's just on this, uh... Alarm clock layer though. Red looks pretty good for outlines. Whoops. Yeah, it does. I don't have to use the yeah, eraser. the highlights kind of staying in place looks good. Highlight staying in place as the clock jumps around. That's a good, good job on that one. Oh yeah. Uh, let's see, people are asking about the alias lines, that's for, so that we can apply the correct filters and stuff to make the cell work. Like it's for ease of painting, ease and consistency in painting, and then also for versatility later when we're applying like filters to specific lines or specific colors. And then we'll apply a filter afterwards to smooth out the lines at the end.
Yogurt head, yeah. Uh, that's definitely hard. And also figuring out how to judge whether the training you're doing is effective or not is pretty difficult. But I don't know if you heard Jarrett go over like the basics of what Dolga studies or what they're doing for the training program in Tonari. But starting with tracing, then going to shift and trace in-betweens, and then moving on from that into uh, in-betweens that require certain techniques or draftsmanship, like um, in-between effects or floating hair or flowing hair. Or like more complex rotation stuff that you're that you need draftsmanship skills for. I think this looks pretty good. Yeah. Right. Now that I've pretty much finished painting, now I get to do the fun task of finding all the holes in the cell. Woo. And I'll show you guys how I do that in Clip Studio Paint. We can't have holes because it'll be extremely noticeable whenever you do compositing. So I make a layer on the top, and then I go with, I'll just grab black, and then hit the paint bucket tool up here, fill everything, and then we're going to clip the, clip it to the, the layer below, and lower the opacity a little bit. You can already see that we found some holes. These are big holes too. So I'm gonna take the color that I need off of the uh, color sheet. I'm just gonna fill this you created in. created an auto action for that. Ah, that would be very nice. There's something like that in um, Paint Man actually too, that I wish they had in Clip Studio. So if there's an auto action, uh, <laughs> I'd love for you to link it to us. It would be very useful. So I think in Clip Studio, not Clip Studio, but in Paint Man, you hit Control B, and then it just turns the entire fill area black. And so any unfilled uh, red, blue, or green shows up immediately, and red, blue, green, and white, you can tell immediately. I'm going to shrink this down to just the eight cells so that I don't have to flip through everything more than once. Hmm. Main areas to check is kind of corners, intersections, places where shadows meet. Control B. Yes. Yeah, I wish I was smart enough to make auto actions. We got a big hole here. I need to make sure that the plushie here is actually included. You hit record and then apply all the fix you want. I guess I'll try it out sometime. 
Chile, if you're asking about the line art, it's so that you can apply effects to it later. Uh, here's an example of the effects that I've done before. Hopefully that link doesn't get deleted. But the left side is before effects, and then the right side is afterwards. But having the lines pixelated makes it easy to fill in. Someone was asking if you could do those line effects in Clip Studio, and I don't really know of a way to do it. So you can you can smooth it in Clip Studio; it just looks bad. The filter's not very advanced. Ah, there's only one setting as well. I can show an example after I finish filling in these. Because technically, you can do all your compositing in Clip Studio. It's just not really ideal. It's not very yeah, interesting not very to try it out. Yeah. It'd be interesting to try out but, like once we're done compositing in After Effects to do like different versions. There there is like technically everything you would need to do compositing is in here. I mean, you've got all your blending modes, you've got blur filters, you can do radial blurs, rendering effects like uh fish eye like you can technically composite and do effects in here, but it's it's most of the effects are just kind of one setting. There's no parameters to adjust. What's the ideal way to apply the filters? I'm not sure. I kind of did it through trial and error, so there might be easier ways to do it. But, uh. Like as a quick rundown, I did color key to change the color from black to a slight off black, like brownish color. Then color keyed out that color into a different separate layer. And then keyed out everything but that color, or everything opposite of that color, so that it had only the fill colors on a separate layer. So you have fill colors only and line color, or like lines only on two layers. And then on the lines, you duplicate those again then put a noise filter on top of that and then another mask so that like part of the lines disappear and then like a pinching mask filter that makes the lines thinner as well on top of that so it's really complex but uh i'm trying to figure out like a standard that we can apply that won't look too bad color key is when you it's like a green screen. So a green screen is a single color that gets cut out in post-processing. So when you use a color key in After Effects, it cuts out either just that color or everything but that color. And that's why you use the pixelated lines and fill, because that way only that color exists. So for black lines, it's black only, and you can just isolate and cut out those lines. All right, all the holes are filled on Emily. Time to go check out the mm. alarm clock, which very it's likely that it's gonna have holes, but less likely because it's so simple, but we'll see. Oh, we had three pixels missing here. One. Where's the other one? Um, Will, do you think it's better to leave the shadow 100% opacity, or is it better to fill it at 50% or do the WXP here at the paint stage? Uh, you should leave it at 100, okay. but fill it with something other than black. It needs to be like a specific color so that we can color key that, all, that out as well. Okay, make it like a brownish black. All right. Barkarat, I think OLM color key slash keep is the best with AE's keying plugins. It never works. Uh, yeah, I've run into some issues with that. 
Another one that I've been trying out is F's plugins, and those are on GitHub, and those are pretty good as well. F's plugins, I'll type that in. So you guys can see how much faster coloring is than doing Doga. It was, what, yeah. almost an hour and a half to color all these frames. To do Doga on it took nine hours. So Right. And that's... Coloring is often 150 yen per frame. And Doga is often 200 to 300 yeah, per frame. That's not, so if you think about that's that... That's not fair. <laughs> generally, color staff makes more. Um, so here I'm going to quickly show you guys what it looks like to smooth it in Clip Studio. And it'll kind of give you a better idea of what the end result might look like. So I will just grab... Let's just grab a cell 8. I'm going to take a... A and its parent. I'm going to duplicate it up here and then I'm just going to flatten it. Smoothing test, I'll call it. I'll zoom so in so you guys can plugins. actually tell. F's so plugins are kind of hard on the RAM. If you uh, if you go filter, blur, smoothing, this is Clip Studio's anti-aliasing filter. It does a decent job, but it's not it's not nearly as good as OLM or PSoft. Can you zoom in a little more? Or maybe the stream's not caught up. I have some issues in here I might actually have to fix. We've got some stray pixels. I don't know if the PSoft or OLM filters deal with stray pixels or not. Uh, if it's one pixel floating, then it's kind of an issue, yeah. But you can see there, the, the the smoothing filter doesn't really do that great of a job in here. You can see there's a lot of staggering happening. Um, I'm gonna need to go over the each cell real quick and deal with some stray pixels, it seems. You can notice that it doesn't anti-alias one pixel because you can't. Right. I'm just going to use the pen tool here. JU, you're asking about uh, if we're going to use Redis or OpenTunes. We're going to try to use all three, but Jared's most familiar with Clip Studio Paint, so he's doing the paint for this cut in Clip Studio. I'll probably be working with Redis, and then one of us is going to have to figure out OpenTunes mm -hmm. before the project's over. Yeah, did you fill in all the cheek blush on the separate layer? Yeah. Okay. Fast. Hi, hi. This section here on the neck where the pixels keep touching and splitting is that an issue yeah uh can you play it back like it might look kind of jittery or poppy ultimately i wonder if it's better to just fill it all black uh you can keep it as it is for now maybe and we can see how it looks with the uh yeah if that if you could cut that top area so that was there was like a single pixel area of like um, skin color between there. That would be ideal.
It thins the line though. Yeah, okay. Maybe you could fill it with all blacks in. I don't know. Uh, yeah, maybe it is better to fill it in with all black. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's a lot better. It's the, it's the contrast with that was like the main issue, I think. If, yeah. it, if it wasn't yeah. between two black exactly. lines, it wouldn't have been as bad. All right. I think I'm saying that's done. Okay. So I've got to go for now, and I'll maybe be back to do some work. In, it's one o'clock now, so maybe in an hour I can do some more work. And I'll probably be doing uh, Genga Sakkan on one more cut. Great. I don't know if I will be joining that stream because I have uh, I have some retakes I have to work on. Okay, sounds good. All right. Good uh, job on the paint work. Yeah. I think it turned out good. Um, before we end the stream, does anyone have any final questions before we go? Do you ever find yourself thinking, I'm not good enough to be doing this while working? Yes. It's just yeah. you have to be doing something to battle that. And not being... Uh, yeah, I pretty much feel like that all the time. Like thinking that, yeah. It's just... I think one thing that helps is seeing how far you've come since you started. So if you're like, at least I'm not as bad as I used to be. Maybe that's enough. Yeah. Yeah. It would definitely help. Do we have an Instagram? No. But we have Twitter. I don't know if we could help you with installing Redis. I'm doing retakes. What software do you use for, for professional jobs? I use Clip Studio Paint. Same here. Can you post your link on Sahuga board? Sure. I'm going to export this and then post it on Twitter so you guys can check out the final results. There's my link, if YouTube doesn't delete it. Yeah, thanks a lot for coming to watch everybody. Yep, we appreciate it. Thank you. It. Stay tuned, we'll probably have another stream up later today or this week. Thanks and you see you guys next time. Yeah.